Hello, everybody. And no, I'm not just wearing the same outfit every day. I'm recording a bunch of videos at once. Um, so get that out of your damn head, okay? Um, so today, we're doing another book haul. Um, today, it's um, a bit different. It is a book haul from the community thrift store on Valencia street in San Francisco. And I think this is still technically the mission district. Um, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. So, um, I'm going to be kind of talking a lot about this, but if you recall, um, the video I did on the immersive Frida, I was talking about how I was really it left a very sour taste in my mouth, and um, but there was other art that I saw in San Francisco that like blew me away more than most galleries and shit like that. Eventually, so this is kind of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, right next to the community thrift store um, is an alley called um, the Clarion. Alley mural project or camp. Um, and it's been going on for a long time. And I will put pictures and stuff up here to show you. But um, we just started walking down this alley. Um, and there were so many <clears throat> moving pieces not that they moved or they were on a garage door it was like they moved you and um i don't know if it was the secession of each thing that i saw but um <clears throat> i got to one and i just um my heart broke and um I turned on the waterworks and I had a moment and the moment was from art and the moment was from like street art. It was like a mural in an alley and um, it was so fucking moving and then like everything else after that, I was just, um, <clears throat> blathering. Like I was just like, Oh God. Um, and I had to spend a little bit on my own and just kind of soak up what I saw. Um, I think the, and I'll show it up here in a minute, but the thing that hit me, Who the one the thing that hit me harder than anything was this piece um, that had like a um, kind of like a cell door, and um, it said that um, there are more African Americans in. Um, our prison system now that ever were slaves um, during like the Civil War and all that stuff. Um, I don't know. It just um, it It's weird how you could sit there and go, oh, yes, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, and over, this over here, this is also bad. Oh, this is bad. Um, but when someone just takes, like, a simple fucking statement that compares two things and makes you look at it, that, like, you could get knocked over with a feather at it. You know, you're just like, fuck, no fucking, oh my. And it just like, it hits you so fucking hard. And um, 
it's shocking. It's totally shocking. And, um, like, regardless of what, like, I think this is, like, way beyond political beliefs. Like, this has nothing to do with if you are a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, um, a Martian, um, you know, whatever. Like, it doesn't matter what the fuck you are. Um, that is a fucking staggering fucking statistic. And it's fucking disgusting. So, um, um, I highly recommend that alley, um, the Clarion alley. Um, if any of you, uh, end up in San Francisco for any reason, um, to just take a look at it, um, and honestly, I didn't take the tour, but there was a tour going through. And in hearing bits of what the tour guide was saying about everything, I almost wish I did take the tour. Um, that would have been, like, uh, really great to hear. Um, so anyway, that was amazing. But right next door to this, and in fact, um, some of the work that was on the buildings um, was this building, which was the community thrift store. And um, I think I kind of went in just because um, I needed it, something to get my mind on something else. Um, I had been standing outside for a while um, thinking about... Um, everything I just saw and um, it was really I don't know I didn't want to dwell in and maybe that's a bad thing you know maybe um, when art moves you like that you're supposed to do something you're supposed to do something creative or do something um, loudly to make some kind of statement. But at that time, um, it was just too much and I needed a distraction, I guess. So I just meandered into this thrift store and I thought, hey, maybe there's some ridiculously large um, light brown leather jacket that I wouldn't be able to find in LA that I could find here, you know, or, um, maybe there's some platform high heel shoes, size 13 that I could find here that I wouldn't be able to find in LA, whatever, you know? Um, <clears throat> and then I was noticing all the amazing furniture they had there. And I'm like, dude, if, like they had furniture like this in the thrift stores in LA, I'd be losing my flipping mind right now. But then I saw um, books and there was great music playing in this place, dude. Great music. Like Tom Waits was on, television was on. Um, what else did they have playing in there while I was there? It doesn't matter. But um, <clears throat> the taste in music was amazing. So that like made me feel better immediately but they have this big book section and I was like, Oh, okay. I'll check out the books. And, um, like they had just rows and rows and rows of bookcases. And I was like, Oh, okay. I'll check this one out here. I'll check. And, and then right at the end, there was a, like the first end cap was poetry. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And I know I've said this on this channel before and I can't reiterate this enough. If you live in a area that over the last 50 years has been known for some type of literary movement or something, um, whether it be um, there was a sci-fi publisher near you in the 80s or there was um, 
you know, like a lot of zines came out of this area. Like I always say, like being on the West Coast, um, when I talk to people who like find books in thrift stores, and I talk to people on the East Coast who find books in thrift stores, on the East Coast, you oh, especially the Northeast, you always find better shit than we could ever find here because people have been living on the east coast ever since people had been living here from england like coming over on the ships and um because of that um you have a lot more people with a lot more books um and they tend to stay in the area and so um you know books accumulate they get passed down from generation to generation they go to libraries libraries have sales and it's still in the general area but usually when people move um west from the east coast usually almost without fail the first thing people get rid of when they're planning a move out of state is oh I got to get rid of all these books. These are so heavy. This is gonna like uh, I don't have room for this. Um, I'm taking my bed and my um, my real doll. I, I I can't. I don't have room for these books. So those always end up um, back into the community. So you always find like just so much more amazing stuff the farther east you go, and especially up. Um, but so I'm in San Francisco and I'm like, oh, okay, San Francisco, we have city lights here, a bunch of zines were made out of here. Um, you know, like they should probably have some pretty cool shit in the poetry section. Dude, let me show you what. Let me show you what. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Okay. So this is what I got. Now, um, I'll start with this because um, I just nabbed it. Um, I didn't really think much of it, but it was a dollar. So I'm like, okay, I'll get it. Um, this is a Ezra Pound poetry book, um, Forms and Renewal, 1908 through 1920. Um, and this is a... University of California Press from Berkeley. So, um, my history with Ezra Pound is quite shoddy. Um, I've never really liked what I've read. Um, but I know there's some good shit there. It just hasn't been in the books of his that I've read. So I was like, huh. And I'm like, okay, let me check this out. Um, and this book has some, like, horrific, um, like, if you could see, like, this book used to all be this color, or it used to all be this color. And um, this was in a bookcase that was by the sun. And so you got that. Um, it's kind of hysterical. Uh, anyway, so... Yeah, because you can see the... Oh, it's hysterical. Okay, whatever. Okay, so we have... Um, this was copyright 1969. Berkeley Press, and this is a first edition. So uh, it's just... I'm like, yeah, okay, a dollar. You, you got me. I'll, 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 I'll play ball. Um... So, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start with these. Um, I guess we'll start with this. But they, there was a bunch of zines and um, stuff like that. So, this is um, Minotaur, number 57, from um, Port Townsend Minotaur Press. Um, and this is from Port Townsend, Washington. And this was uh, 2010. Okay, now you're going to see the spectrum of, like, at least, like, West Coast poetry that I have in here. Okay, so, 2010 for this thing, dollar. Okay, some of these were 75 cents, okay. Um, this one here, Nine Queen Bees, 
zero issue. Um, this was 75 cents. Uh, this is 1962, and no real copyright page or nothing on here. Um, let's see here. This was edited in Hawaii. Um, so that's fun. Nine Queen Bees. A 1965 or no 1970 this is summer 1970 um, journal poetry journal um, okay so yeah let me do uh, which one should I do first okay let's just take these and it's funny because when these here I'll put these here because this is getting a little unwieldy um, when I put these up on the um, like the cash register thing, the dude who um, was like ringing me up kind of was like, when he was looking at this one, he was like, what? And he opened it up and he started like kind of looking at it and was like, and it was like that feeling. And I've had this when I've worked in retail where I worked at a place that had something really cool that I had no fucking idea was in there. And then somebody comes up and buys it. And the whole reason why you get a job at a place like that is so you can get all that shit before other people get it. So ridiculous. So this is your Vox, I guess is what it's called. Journal of the Underlying Voice. Um, I got issue or volume one and volume three. That's what they had there. <clears throat> um, and this is Poetry Surrealism. Um, so I have no idea um, what I'm going to find here. But if you look on the back, you can see all the people that are in this one. And all the people who were in this one. I guess you could just pause the screen and read it if you give a shit. Um, but yeah, so um, that's really cool. Some of these look very strange. Um but these are from, uh, let's see here. Whoa, easy. Um, they're from 2001 is this one. And this one is 2003. So early 2000s there. Um, they, were, they were shooting a movie outside um, this morning, so I woke up too early with the sound of a woman screaming and crying in the middle of the street. Um, so I thought, of course, someone was being like fucking gutted on the fucking asphalt out there. And I like run out, like look through the windows, like butt naked, you know, as God intended me. And um, thinking I'm going to see some like horrific murder and I just see this chick and these two guys run up to her and they're like catching her as she falls down. And then there's like 25 fucking people around like holding lights and mics and fucking cameras and shit. I'm like, oh, motherfuckers. Um, so anyway, what is this one? This one is Selections from the Work of Forrest Gander. And this is a supplement to the books Science and Steeple Flower from 98 and Torn Awake from 2001, printed solely for use in the personal library of Richard Taggett. Oh. Oops. Um, yeah, so that's cool. I got something printed for the sole use of someone's name. That's actually kind of cool that they did that on the cover there. So yeah, um, so sole use for Richard Taggett. So either Richard Taggett died and there was an estate sale, or Richard Taggett didn't think too much of this and gave it to Goodwill. That's fucking embarrassing. But anyway, 75 cents, so not too shabby. Um, 
Then I got these guys, and these are really cool, and I'm super stoked. And again, I love this, like, hard um, paper cardstock covers. I, I, oh, I just love them. So anyway, so Americana. I have number six. Lovely cover. Americana, a Bird and Beckett review, 2013. And finally, I think this is my favorite cover out of all of them. This is Americana 5. That just looks so fucking cool. The colors are great. Feels good. Um, so number five. I wonder why they went to the year... Oh, Americana. This is 2014, San Francisco. This one is 2013, and so this one would be, what, 2015? Americana number six. Doesn't say the date yet. Um, It does not say the date, but it's dedicated to two people who died in 2015. So it's either late 2015 or um, 2016. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, these look great, and I can't wait to fucking go through these. Um... Yeah, it's weird. Nothing from the 80s. So what happened to poetry in the 80s, guys? I have the 60s, the 70s, the 90s, the early 2000s, and the mid to or the teen 2000s. Nothing from the 80s. What the fuck? Come on, guys. Get with the show, Graham. Um, oh, and that's not even the last thing I got. I forgot about this. And kid you not, what did I find there? Something from Black Sparrow Press in a fucking thrift store. Are you joking? This is Paul Bowles. Or Bowles. Oh, I like to say Bowles. Next to Nothing. Collected Poems. 26 through 77. Jeez. And it's got those great end papers inside. Uh, so yeah. So this is 1990. Black Sparrow Press. This is close enough to 80. Oh, but this is the second printing. Hmm. Next to nothing, copyright 1972-1981. There you go. So is the second printing 1990? All right. I'll, I'll consider this 1980-1981. Good job, team. Next to nothing. So, yeah. Um, I have not read this dude before that I know of. Uh-oh. We got some very heavy concrete poetry in here. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm kind of excited. So, um, oh, The Sheltering Sky. Have I read that? No, anyway. So, yeah, next to nothing. Um, but, yeah, so there you go. Um, a bunch of books I got at... Um, Community thrift. And the thing that I, and dude, I spent like 11 bucks. So that ain't bad. Um, but one of the cool things, and when they were bringing it up, I didn't understand what was happening. Um, so, like, oh, you know what? And they overcharged me. That's okay. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so how they do their receipts, okay? Let me see if I can get this up there. It would say like, oh, okay, so this book, Community Living Campaign, Mission Graduates, um, SFTGF, KPU. Um, I'm like, what the fuck is that? I don't understand. And then it's at the bottom. It says, thank you for supporting CTS and the charities above. So I'm assuming that. Um, <clears throat> Depending on what you buy, I don't know if it means on how it came into the store, but a portion of that goes to um, 
certain other charities. So Mission Graduates, Community Living Campaign, Larkin Street Youth Center. Um, I'm assuming these are all things, and, and that's fucking amazing. That is so awesome. And if you guys are in the LA area and you know of a place that does something like this, fucking tell me because that's that's some cool shit. I'm very much on board for that. Um, so if you are in San Francisco, in the Mission District, um, this is on Valencia Street. Um, and you can go to their website, communitythriftsf.org. Um, great, great shop. Great shop. Uh, give it a look. And um, if you've read any of these, let me know down below. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.